So today we're going to be uh, making this uh, bracket assembly here, uh, taking you step by step. Uh, we're going to be going over all the basic tools that you uh, could be using in this uh, design workspace here. And uh, by the end of this, you should be confident in using uh, the basic tools here like extrude, the whole feature. Uh, we're going to go into some threading here, uh, different types of holes, some fillets, chamfers. So uh, basically everything you'll be using within your day-to-day -day on Fusion. So uh, I'm just going to get this started here. I'm just going to close that one. Okay. So in order to start this, uh, we're going to start off with the uh, base here. And to do that, we're going to do this, click the sketch uh, tool in this top left in the, the Create tab. Uh, we're going to start this on the bottom plane here. And then uh, we're going to want to sketch a rectangle. And we can accomplish this by, there's a couple different ways we can do that. We can select this uh, rectangle option here in the Create tab. Or you can go down to this drop down. And you get a couple more options of the uh, type of rectangle you'd like to create whether it's two point, a three point, or a center rectangle. Uh, another cool way, if uh, actually if you see this R right next to this two point rectangle, is that that's a keyboard shortcut. So if you just press R on your keyboard, that's gonna bring up your uh, two point rectangle here. Then if you see on the right here, you actually get all the different rectangle options. So for this case, I wanna use a center point rectangle. And uh, I can explain a little bit more why I'm using center point versus the two point in just a minute here. And then you can also just type your dimensions directly in uh, from this uh, part right here. So I'm going to do two by two. And to go to the next dimension, you just hit tab. And then you can go back and forth between them just by clicking tab. I'm just going to hit enter. And then uh, if, you, if you don't do it like that and you just do a click and drag, uh, I'm going to show you the other way that it could pop up. If, uh, oops, sorry, let's click the wrong button there. Uh, if you do that, so I'm press R again, center point. If you just click off and select your uh, rectangle here, uh, you're going to see that these lines are now blue. Uh, if you saw previously, they were black. Uh, black lines mean your uh, sketch is fully constrained. Uh, blue means it's not, uh, which basically means I can click and drag this and manipulate the size in any way that I want. Um, so in order to constrain it, I'm just, I can either select the dimension tool here or that one has a shortcut key of D. Right? Uh, so I could just press D to dimension this and I can do a two by a two. And then I can hit finish sketch because I'm done with this profile now. And then I'm gonna come up to the top left here and I'm gonna use this extrude tool. And again, this has a short, but, uh, short cut key as E. I'm just gonna click it right there. And then within the extrude space, you can either click and drag this uh, arrow here to get your extrusion up and down or whichever direction you like, or you can just type the dimension directly into the box here. So I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna press enter. Okay, now that we have our base done here, uh, we're gonna wanna create another profile and uh, we're gonna do this on the left side of our box here. In order to get my view correct, I'm gonna use my handy view cube that's up here in the top right corner. You can see each, uh, face is labeled there. I want to be on the left side here. So I'm going to click that and that's going to put me perfectly parallel with the uh, face that I want to be on. So I'm going to hit sketch and then I'm going to select the actual face on the part. So you can see I'm selecting this, the actual face here. Okay. And now uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a two point rectangle this time. Again, I can just press R for that. And then I'm going to select this top line here. You can see it snaps to that. So it's going to be from there, and then I'm just going to click arbitrarily over there. Okay, I'm going to hit escape to get out of the tool. Then I'm going to press D for dimension here, and then that's going to be a height of 0.75 inches. And now I want my uh, rectangle here to be perfectly in center with my base plate that I had extruded. So in order to accomplish that, I can use these uh, geometric constraints, which are up here. And to do that, I'm going to use this midpoint constraint. It's this little triangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the line of the base of my rectangle here. And then I'm going to select the top of the base plate here. And you see it moved over and I now have this triangle uh, here. That basically just means that it has a midpoint constraint um, between this line and this line. Okay, and now I want to add an arc that goes from this side to this side. 
And uh, to do that, I'm gonna I can press circle up here, or C for circle, and then I can click and drag it out, and then I can snap it to this point right here. So I'm just gonna snap it there. And now this is my desired profile, but I got all these extra lines intersecting here. And while it's not necessarily a, a big problem, uh, I prefer my sketches to be a little bit cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this trim tool up here under modify. And again, that also has a shortcut of T. If you're ever wondering what the shortcuts are um, under these drop downs, it'll give you a nice highlight or a description here of what each uh, shortcut actually is. So use this trim tool. And then I can left click my mouse and I can just drag over these lines here and that removes the uh, unwanted lines. And then you can see, like I said before, this is still not fully constrained because this is blue. And if you're unsure what uh, is not constrained, you can always just click a line and drag it. I can see uh, the width of this while also the kind of placement of my circle is a little bit off. So uh, I'm going to hit D for dimension here. Dimension the width of this. It's also going to be 0.75. And then you can see my circle got a little wonky over here. I'd like those to be nice and tangent with these two lines here. So I'm going to use these uh, geometric, con geometric constraints again. I'm using the uh, tangent one here, which will make any uh, line tangent with any arc, or it can be two circles as well, tangent with each other. Uh, so I'm going to hit the arc here, and I'm going to select this line, and now that made that tangent. And then I got to do it again for this line, so I'm going to select the line and the arc, and now it's tangent. All my lines are black. I can no longer drag anything, so I am fully constrained. So I'm going to finish this sketch here. And then I'm just going to give myself a little bit of better view by using the top corner here on my view cube. Give myself a nice symmetric view. And then I'm going to extrude this profile here. And then for this dimension, I'd like this to be 0.375. Oops, not 75, 375. But I don't want this overhanging here off my part. I'd like it to be, you know, on top of the part, the base plate here. So uh, in order to change the direction, I can just put a negative sign right in front of that and it's going to flip the direction of my extrusion. So I'm just going to hit OK with that. Okay. Now the next step for this is going to be I'm going to create a hole that's nice and concentric with this uh, arc that I have right here. So in order to accomplish this I'm going to select the hole feature up here and then for this one I just want a nice simple hole. Uh, there's a couple different hole options here. We'll, we'll get a little bit into that a little bit later. Um, so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select the face that my hole is going to go on. I want that to be on this face here. And then uh, you see I get this nice little picture right here, a little graphic of a drill. Uh, and that's how I edit the dimensions for this hole. It's pretty nice letting you know what dimensions are controlling what. So uh, for the depth of this, there's actually this tab here called Extents. And you get a couple different options. You get Distance, Up To, and All. Uh, distance is just manually input uh, how deep the hole is. Up to is you can select a, a feature, a face, a point, uh, whatever it may be to for your hole to go up to. and then Or you can just click all and that's just going to go through the whole part. So for this I just want it to go through all. And then for my diameter here, I want it to be 0.51 inches. And then my, uh, my position is not quite right yet, so I'm going to click this left tab again. And I want this to be concentric with this arc here. And I can do that by either clicking and dragging my center point you see that grayed out dot there, I can snap it to there, like that. Or I can just simply click on this arc, and that'll make it also concentric. So now that I have that in the correct place, I got my nice dimensions that I like, and hit OK. All right, and now for the next step, we are going to be adding some fillets into this uh, feature here. Uh, in order to do that, I'm just gonna go into this modify section here. I'm gonna click the fillet tool. Again, that also has a shortcut of F. And then, uh, so uh, I'm just going to select the edges that I would like filleted, which is going to be this edge, this edge, this edge, and then I'd like this edge as well. And then I also want this edge filleted, but I'm not going to do that right now because I just want to show you guys a little tip, uh, or not really tip, but something I, when I first was using the fill tool, gave me a little bit of trouble. So I'm going to insert the dimension here, which is going to be a 30 thou radius hit enter and now I wanted this edge to be filleted as well but I accidentally forgot to click it while I was creating my feature 
So what I can do in order to fix that is I can come down here into my timeline. I can uh, right click right here and then I can edit the feature. And then you can see I'm not able right now to just click the line. It's not letting me select it for some reason. Uh, I was a little bit stuck with this, but uh, you can actually see it popped over right there. Hold control to modify selection. So what I can do is I can hold control and now you see my lines are back and I can select this line now. And then I let go of control and it's selected. I just hit OK. And then we're good. And now uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, let me reopen this oldest assembly. I want to show you guys what feature we're creating next. Uh, you can see we have the same feature on both sides of this part here. Uh, and instead of just doing everything I just did twice, uh, this is where that center point rectangle comes in. Uh, you can see when I unhide my origin here that this plane is now in the direct center of my part. So what that does for me is I'm now able to mirror this whole feature here onto the other side of my part. So what I'm going to do in order to accomplish that, I'm going to click this create drop down, come all the way down here to the mirror function, select mirror. And then I, there's a couple different types of mirrors. I can mirror faces, bodies, features, components. But for this instance, we're going to be mirroring of features. And now in order to select the objects, I can just click the features directly. Or I can come down here in my timeline and I can select the features there. So I want to select the extrusion, the hole, and the fillet. And then I'm going to come over here to the mirror plane. I'm going to select that. From a, and then I'm going to select this mid plane right here. See, it gives me a nice little silhouette of a preview of the mirror. And that looks to be right. So I'm going to hit OK. All right, so now we have that mirror over, which is perfect. Now I'm just going to hide this origin because we don't need that right now. OK. And now next up, we're just going to be creating some more fillets on all the corners of this part here. So I'm just going to use that fillet feature again. And I can just select these four corners here. Like that. And then this is going to be a quarter inch fillets. So type my dimension in, I hit enter. Okay. And now next up, we're going to be creating these... Uh, See, I'm just going to hide these parts for right now. We're going to create these counterboard holes in here. You see there's two holes kind of going to different depths here. And uh, this is where the uh, some different options in this hole tool come into play. Uh, before we do that, I want to set up my locations because I want them to be on um, center with these arcs that I just created in the corners. So I'm going to click this face right here. I'm going to hit create sketch. And then I'm just going to select this face and then under uh, create here i can uh, go over to this project project or include uh, it also has a shortcut uh, p so i'm going to click project and then you can just uh, project uh, both like faces or lines or anything you select or you can select entire bodies if you're working within multiple component or body uh, model but for this case we just want to do selection filter for just the one face so we're just going to select that geometry and then I'm going to hit OK. And now you see these purple lines here. That's just uh, signifying like blue is unconstrained, black is fully constrained. This purple just means it's a projection of a pre-existing uh, geometry that you've defined somewhere else. Uh, so I'm just going to finish sketch here. Now you see it gave me these nice center points for my arcs right here. So I'm going to select the hole feature here. And now I don't want just a simple hole. I want to use this counterbore hole. And a counterbore hole is used for when you're using like socket head cap screws, which are uh, these things right here. If you've done any you know, hardware usage, you kind of know what those are. Um, it makes it sit nice and flush so you're not popping out of your part there. So in order to do that, I'm going to select this whole feature. I'm going to select counterbore. And then uh, simple, if I were to do simple, that would make me, um, you can see if I select the point here. It's going to make me insert all the dimensions necessary for this hole. But the nice thing is if you select this clearance slot here, or sorry, clearance option, uh, that lets you select from standard uh, bolt sizes. So uh, I can do that and I'm going to do use, uh, this is metric bolts and these are your imperial US bolts. Uh, so I'm going to select the US ones and then you can choose your size right here. And then you have a fastener type. For this one, we're just using a socket head cap screw. And then it's going to be a size number six screw. 
And then we can just leave our fit as normal. That's fine. And then I want to finish selecting these, so I can just keep selecting these corner points here. And now it's going to create all four of those. Again, I don't want just a regular distance. I'm just going to go through all. Hey, Quinn, how did you select all of those? What did you push? Uh, I didn't have to push anything. It just uh, automatically let me select all of those. No control or anything? No, not for this case. I didn't need to. Cool. If it's not working for you, try control. Because sometimes if, uh, if it's uh, selecting multiple items, it likes you to hold control. But... Sometimes it doesn't. So if if you're trying to select multiple and it's not letting you, try holding control down and that might help you. So press OK to finish that feature. And now I've got my four countersunk holes. Okay. So now uh there's actually some uh, I actually forgot to do. A little bit of a mistake on my end, but it's nothing I can't fix. Uh this is actually one individual component within my assembly. In a standard practice, you'd want to set that component up before you start modeling. Uh, and what that does is basically that's going to put this process tree within that component and not within your full assembly. But uh, it's not too big of a deal, but if you're working on larger assemblies, it might make your timeline look really messy. So uh, if you, you notice you did it a little early on, you know, it might not be too bad to just go back and restart if you're, you know, you had just done the base plate. But I'm a little far into it right now, so what I can just do is I'm going to hit New Component. I want to save this internally within my assembly file, so I'm just going to keep that selected. I'm going to change the name here to Bracket. And then I'm going to select this From Bodies option here. So that lets me select any pre-existing bodies within this file to create a component out of. So I'm just going to select that, and then I'm just going to hit OK. You can see that changed this over here to component. Oh, I should have, I might have renamed it when I select from bodies, but that's okay. I can just right click this and then I can come down. There should be a rename option here. I think you can double click it in the browser. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the bracket. Should enter. Okay. So you see these, these are still here uh, within my assembly timeline. Uh, had I done this before, they wouldn't show up unless I had my component active. So uh, if I had done it correctly, my timeline would actually be empty right now while I'm working on this full assembly. But like I said, it's not too big of a deal in this case, but generally you want to be trying to create your components before you start modeling them. Uh, so next up here, I'm just going to save this file. I'm just going to call this bracket assembly because this is the actual assembly file that I'm saving here. I'm just going to hit save. And now it created the it changed from untitled here to bracket assembly v0. That just means I just just now created it. Uh, or this is v1 now, but that's just I just created this component or this uh, file here. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a new component. And then uh, this time I'm, this is going to be the pin. Uh, I'll show you what that's going to look like. This uh, pin right here is going to be the uh, part we're creating. So uh, I'm just going to hit new component. I'm going to change the name here to pin. And then uh, you see as this parent selected right now. Uh, this one's correct. It's uh, selecting this bracket assembly. The, the top, I call that the top level, um, is uh, the full assembly file here. Uh, if you had this uh, one selected by accident instead of that one, uh, what that's going to do is it's actually going to nest the, that pin component under your bracket drop down here, which we do not want. Um, so just make sure when you're selecting the parent here, uh, if, it's own, if it's its own standalone, not like part of a sub assembly or something, uh, you actually just make sure you select the top level as the parent. And then this check mark is just going to basically activate the part as soon as I create it. So I'm just going to OK. See now I have my pin component here on the left. And then it silhouetted, it kind of faded out my uh, bracket, basically just meaning this is not the active component right now. Right now we're editing the pin, so this is not really uh, editable in this state right now. If I wanted to edit it, I have to go and reactivate it. So uh, to uh, make this pin here, I'm going to go to this left face, and then I'm going to create a sketch here on the face itself. Again, I'm selecting the actual face here. 
And then what I want to do is I want to create a circle. And then I just want to snap right to the center of the uh, hole that we had just created here. So it looks like that. And then this is going to be a 0.5 inch, oops, not 5, 0.5 inch hole or pin. I'm going to enter. I'm actually going to want to create another circle here that's going to be the head of the pin. And that's going to be 0.75 inches. I'm just going to hit enter. Okay, so now I have my two circles that I want to be extruding from. So I'm going to hit finish sketch here. I'm going to select my extrude tool again. And I'm going to select this, uh, this profile, the inside pin that I want. And then I can click and drag that again. So this is in the negative direction. This will be positive. So I want this to be a negative 2.25, I believe. Yes, negative 2.25. I'm going to hit enter. You see, I want to extrude from that same sketch that I just had uh, used there, but uh, my sketch profile has disappeared on me. Uh, in order to use it again, I'll have to do the drop down menu for my pin, come under my sketches, and then unhide this sketch profile. So you can see that made that reappear. So now I want to extrude this, and now. I want to extrude this whole inside of this 0.75 circle, you know, but if I select that, you know, it's only creating this section of the profile that I created. Uh, you could come in here and manually select each profile, but uh, I'll show you some common errors along with that, uh, or some mistakes that can happen with that. Uh, so the tip of this head is going to be 0.125 inches thick enter you see I accidentally missed a little section here it was really small I couldn't really see it from where I was so uh, you know if you hadn't caught that maybe that could cause a mistake in your part a lot later on which uh, would not be good um, so what you can do actually to make this a little bit easier is I can come down here and I can edit the feature I'm just gonna cancel my selected profiles and uh, there's this uh, selection tool so you can kind of see when I click and drag in different directions, when I go to the left, it's got this dashed line here. If I go to the right, it's got a solid line. This dashed line, if I just click and drag over that, it's going to select any profile that square touches. But I don't really want this uh, side selected. And I could just manually unselect it. It's not a big deal in this case, but maybe if there were some a lot more different profiles surrounding this, uh, I wouldn't want to have to do that. So what I can do is if I click and drag to the right with the solid line, that's only going to highlight things that are completely enclosed uh, in, within the uh, square. So you can see it only selected these profiles and not this one. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I have my solid head here. It's not with any gaps or anything like that. So then I can hide this sketch because I no longer need it. I can close those drop downs. And then next I'm going to create a chamfer on uh, this the end of this pin here and uh, you can do that by clicking this drop down menu and selecting this chamfer tool and you can see on my uh, fusion right here it says the shortcut for this is shift plus C now this is not uh, normally there usually there's no shortcut uh, assigned to this chamfer tool but the cool thing is if you select these three dots and you can do this for any tool in fusion uh, if you select these three dots you can actually see this option you change keyboard shortcut and uh, see, uh, here it says a uh, hint. You can combine modifiers like Shift, Control, Alt, and Option, Command uh, to change that. So I know C is already circle, right? So I can't use that. Um, so then uh, if I want to use C, you know, because chamfer, uh, I have to hold down Shift and then C, and then I'm good. And then I hit OK. And now I can use my custom shortcut by holding shift and C and then I'll bring up my chamfer tool and then you can also change uh, pre-existing one so if you wanted to change fillet from F to could shift F and I don't know use sketch fillet for non shift F or whatever you want to do you can actually come in here and change that as well and you can always reset back to default if you're getting a little confused with things but uh, so that's just a nice little quality of life thing right there for you guys uh, so I'm going to create this chamfer at the base here. That's going to be 60 thou. I'm going to hit enter. And then that's pretty much the completion of this pin here. So I'm going to hit 
I'm gonna so now I'm done editing this pin directly so what I want to do is I want to come back here in these uh, white circle right next to the file I want to select that to reactivate my top level assembly because you know everything's solid nothing's hollowed out there now uh, within assemblies when you're having multiple components like this uh, you want things to be in the correct position right everything fitting together like you'd like um, when you first create components, actually, they, they're not um, fixed in place. Like I can click and drag this and, the, and then you can just float off into space. Uh, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to be able to do that, I should say. I'd like everything to stay fixed right where it is. So uh, since this uh, bracket here was my uh, initial component, um, just a little uh, practice I like to use is I always like to make sure my bracket origin is or my base component origin is on point with my uh, assembly origin. So I can do that just by uh, viewing the uh, assembly origin here. I uncheck or by height showing the origin. So if I click the drop bracket drop down, I can show the bracket uh, origin. And then we use this joint feature right here. This is how you uh, mate two components together pretty much. And you can select faces, points, edges, um, diameters, all sorts of things. And uh, we'll get a little bit more into this as well. So we'll select this joint feature here, and I want to select this uh, the uh, origin right here, and then I'm going to select the uh, the assembly origin as well, and then I want these to be rigid. And there's all types of different motions that can be allowed within a joint. For right now, we're just going to use the rigid. I'll talk a little bit more about these other ones in a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to use this rigid one. I'm going to press OK. You can see now I can no longer click and drag this bracket away. It is currently fixed in its current position, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So I'm going to hide these origins here. And then maybe maybe you're doing something like we just did right here, where you're modeling some components within the assembly file, right? And you're modeling them, making them exactly where you want them, uh, and you don't want them to move from where you had initially modeled them. So a neat tool that you can use for that is this as-built joint. So this just means basically I modeled this where I want it and I want it to stay there. So I can just select the two components that I want to be mated. And then there you go. And then again, you can use the different types of uh, movements here, but for this case, we're just going to use rigid. So I'll press OK. Now you can see I can no longer move any of these components, which is perfect. That's exactly how I want this to be. And then you might have seen my my part uh, recentering itself here. This is just some too. If if you happen to be like super zoomed in or kind of losing your way, you can just double uh, click your middle uh, middle mouse button, and that'll recenter your part within your screen. Uh, so if you get lost, it's always nice just press that, and you're back to there. Then you can also select the home button right here above the view cube. And that's just going to bring you back to this isometric view. Okay, so next thing what we wanted to use is we're actually going to uh, create a new part in a separate file and then we're going to drop that in here and that's going to be this gold, uh, what do they call it, the clevis. So we're going to be creating this clevis in a separate file and then bringing that into our assembly file. So to start that we're just going to start a new design here by pressing this plus sign. And then for this one we're just going to be creating a sketch on this time we use the front plane here and we're going to use this circle tool and we want this to be a one inch diameter okay and then that's all we need out of this sketch so I could just hit finish sketch and again I got my nice black lines meaning I am fully constrained and uh, if you're uh, creating this circle here uh, this is just some I know some beginners um, someone who's not super familiar with CAD might uh, come into an error with but if you uh, if you create your circle just somewhere here in space I type my one is dimension you see it's still blue uh, if you're not sure what the problem is here you're like okay well size is defined I don't know what else you need to define within a circle it's actually the location kind of within the uh, the file here it doesn't know where your circle is located it knows how big it is but it doesn't know where it is uh, and the only place you can kind of relate it to is the origin. So I'm just going to keep my center on point with the origin here. Now you don't have to always connect a line directly to the origin. You can dimension it from the origin 
but there's always got to be a direct trace back to your origin in order for your sketch to be fully defined. That's just something I've seen some people come into errors with uh, in the past, so I just wanted to mention that here. Uh, so I'm going to hit finish sketch. Then I'm going to extrude this. And now I'm going to talk about some more of these uh, extrusion features. So far we've just been putting in a dimension and, uh, and uh, hitting enter. But uh, actually you can do a couple different things here. Uh, we can change the direction of our extrusion, right? So we can do one-sided, where it just pops out of one side of our sketch. We can do a two-side, where I can control each side's le length individually. Or I can choose symmetric, which is going to go out the same distance in both directions. And then you have a couple different options within this uh, symmetric as well, where you can have it be the dimension you enter is the half length, or you can have it be the whole length. So that just means when I have 1.5 here, it's going out 1.5 this way and 1.5 that way. If I select whole length, the whole thing from bottom to top is 1.5 inches. So for this instance, we're gonna use the whole length here. And then this is just gonna be a half inch extrusion. And then we actually wanna put a little bit of a taper on this. Uh, you can kind of see that here. There's a little bit of a taper within the part. Uh, so let me uh, go back and edit this extrusion. So you can see it's a taper angle right here. So uh, this is going to be a five degree taper on this one. And you can kind of see when I do that, it tapered inwards like this. That's not really what I want. I want this to taper, this to be the highest point and then taper down like that. So in order to do that, I can just put a negative sign to change the direction of my taper. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit OK here. So that's all I need to do in that extrusion. And now I've got my nice tapered extrusion. All right. So the next step here is we're going to be creating that shaft for the uh, for the clevis here. And I'm going to select this uh, center, the bottom plane here, which goes through the center of my previous extrusion. And uh, I'm going to create a circle. This is going to be a 0.375 inch shaft. Just can enter. And then this is basic extrusion, so I finish sketch, and extrude this, and this is going to go up 1.25 inches. And then you can see here, we didn't do anything differently, we did exactly the same thing we've been doing, but for some reason now it's red, right, and it, you can see it's cutting out a hole in my part. Uh, that's because uh, the operation it automatically selected for us here was to cut. So when Fusion uh, notices you're extruding through an existing body, it's going to assume you want to cut out of it. But you could change that just by selecting this drop down. And you can use, uh, for right now we want to use join. There's some other options here where you can use this intersect, which is a bit more of an advanced tool, but I'll show you kind of what it does. It's just going to leave what that is intersecting. So it's going to cut out pretty much everything not included in our profile there. And again, that's a little bit more uh, advanced of a tool, but you know, if you, if you ever find yourself in the need, it's, it's, it's always there for you. So we're going to just leave it on the join operation here. We're going to hit OK. And then next thing we're going to do for this is we're going to put a hole through the center of this. Again, this is nothing we haven't seen. We've done this a couple times now. And it's saved my kind of options from the previous hole. It, it, it'll do that in case you're creating multiple or you forget or something like that. But uh, I just want to use a simple hole and it's going to go simply through it. So I just want to select this face here. And then for the depth, I just want to go through all again. And then for the diameter for this one is going to be 0.51. Okay. And now my position, I wanted this to be in center. Remember, just like before, uh, if I want this to be in center, I can do a nice click and drag, or I can select the profile I want it concentric to. So I'm going to got my location. I got my dimensions. I'm going to hit OK. Now I got my hole here. And then the next thing we're going to do here is actually we're going to create the thread for this. And now if you've used uh, other CAD packages such as SOLIDWORKS, which is where I come from, uh, you can know that threading sometimes is a pain in the butt. Uh, it's hard to find, it's hard to use, it's a little confusing, but Fusion makes this really, really simple. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the create function here and they got this nice thread tool already ready for us. And then it's here, I just select the face, I want threaded. So I'm gonna select the shaft here. And then we, got, we can either have this modeled or not modeled. You can see it makes a nice little 
graphic here or it'll physically model it for us. Uh, for this instance, we're going to keep it modeled, but just a little tip, if you're using large assembly files, uh, you might want to keep this off as not modeled because it can slow down your file. So if you're having a big assembly file with lots of threaded features, uh, I'd recommend not modeling them because it can slow it down. And then we want to uncheck this full length here because uh, we don't want to go the full way down. Uh, we want to set our own distance. Uh, and I'm just going to change the length here to half inch. And then they actually have this cool feature where you can offset it. So maybe your thread doesn't start there. Maybe for some reason it's in the center. So I can offset it down 0.2 inches. Uh, so that's also a tool you can use. But uh, for this instance, we don't need that. So we're just going to leave it at zero. And then it automatically selected for us. It auto recognized the diameter of the shaft we had selected here. So it automatically picked the size thread and the type that we want. Um, it knows that that's a standard ANSI uh, unified screw thread. So it selected the size and then it selected a standard one for us. Uh, if you want to change that, you can change it. But for this instance, this is fine for us. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK here. And that's going to create my thread. And there you go. It's that simple. Okay, now we're just going to add some fillets and uh, chamfers to this thing here. Uh, so uh, I'm going to create some fillets. Okay, so I just want to use this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge right here. And then I want this to be a 60 thou fillet. Okay, pretty simple there. Hit OK. And now I want to create a chamfer. And again, I'm using that Shift C, my customized hotkey there. Again, it might be different for you. You might not have one, which is it's right here. And again, if you want to edit that, it's right there. Uh, so I'm just going to select. So I want to chamfer this edge right here and this edge right here. And I can do that just by manually selecting both edges. But I can also select this face. And what that's going to do is it's just going to chamfer both ends of this automatically. So it just saves you a little bit of time there. And uh, this is going to be a 15th out chamfer. And you can see chamfer that side and chamfer that side with only one click. So that's nice. So I'm going to hit OK. Create the chamfer there. And then our clevis is essentially done. So I'm just going to save this part now. I'm just going to name that clevis. And then I'm just going to hit save. And again, there's a, I didn't mention this before, but there is locations here. So uh, this will show you all your projects and different files and folders you have uh, in your data panel here. So if you want to modeling it and it was defaulted somewhere, you can change the location if you don't want to save there. Uh, but for this one, I just going to leave it there. So I'm just going to hit save. Okay, and then I'm going to come back to my top level assembly here. And I want to add that clevis into here. And I can do that really simply. I can just come over to here. This is the clevis that I had created that I want to add in. I'm just going to click this. And I'm going to drag it over and drop it in. And now it's in my file. It's that easy. Now I'm just going to move it over here just for um, convenience when I start to put this in the place that I want it. So I just hit OK. Now I've got my clevis here. All right. Okay, so now I want to mate this clevis, and I want this hole to be concentric with the pin or the in the holes with the bracket itself. And then I want this to be directly in the center. And again, this is something that I know if you use SolidWorks, there's like four different mates you're going to have to do within that to accomplish this. But Fusion makes this, again, super easy uh, just by clicking this uh, joint feature here. And then, actually, before I do that, uh, I don't really need my pin here right now. It's kind of just in my way, so I can actually just come here and hide it. I'm just going to make it disappear. Don't worry, it's not deleted. You can reshow it again. Uh, but for right now, I just want to hide it because I don't need it at the moment. Uh, it's not going to delete any constraints you would assign to it either. It's just simply bringing it out of view. Uh, so I'm going to click Join here. And then I want to join this hole with this hole. Okay, you can see it kind of brought it there. It's not quite the center. It's not really what I wanted. Uh, so what I can do here is I can just select uh, between two faces. You see it tells me which component is which. I'm going to select the bracket here. And I want it to be between two faces on the bracket. So I'm going to select this face and this face. And then I'd like it to snap. I'm going to hover right here, right in the center. And you can see now, oh, that's not quite right. 
One sec, let's see what, what's wrong here. Let's try that again. Let's try jointing. Uh, let's see. So you can also do it if you want to select. You can select this face, hold Control, select another face, and then hit Joint. You can do that as well. Uh, and then I can again do between two faces here. Select this face and this face, and then I'd like it to snap to the center. There we go. Perfect. Directly in center, all within one joint. And then I don't want this one to be rigid. I actually would like this to move. So there's a couple of different moving options we have here. We have this revolution one, which allows the part to spin around a designated axis. So you can choose the Z axis, the X axis, or the, uh, oops, let's see again, or the Y axis. Now for our case, we'd like this to be spinning around the Z axis. And then if you don't know what each of these does, it actually gives you a nice little animation uh, of what it's going to allow the motion in so you can kind of see cylindrical's got that motion going on pin slots got that going on and you can mess with the rest of these if you want to find out what they do but for this case i just want to do a uh, revolution here so i'm going to hit okay and now i've got my part fully constrained i can bring my pin back because it's no longer in my way and you can see i've got this clevis here Okay, and now I'm going to show you guys is actually uh, if you want to add standard uh, hardware within to your assembly, you want to make sure you don't miss any nuts or bolts or anything. Uh, you need to get a count of them. Uh, if you want to add those directly into your file here, uh, Fusion makes it super easy by coming over to this insert insert drop down here, and then you can actually insert from McMaster Car. McMaster Car is just a big uh, company uh, that has. Um, uh, all of the standard hardwares and they've got all CAD files for all their parts so it makes it super easy so I'm gonna come over to screws and bolts socket head cap screws and then this is gonna be an 632 and it's gonna be 3 eighths in length and then it doesn't matter the material I'm just gonna select this one and you can make the window bigger over here. Maybe not. There you go. And then it doesn't really matter which one because they're all pretty much the same. Uh, it might matter if you're getting into really deep detail, but for this instance, as long as it's 3 eighths, 632, it doesn't matter. So you're going to click the uh, part number right here. And then you can see the product detail. You get the CAD file here. And then I uh, want to use the 3D step. And again, like I said, they have the no threaded version of it. So if you're in a larger file you don't want the threads there you can just get it with no threads but for this instance we'll keep the threads so I'll do 3d step and I'm gonna hit download and now I've got my nice bolt there uh, I did have an issue with this part actually uh, before where MacMaster car was making me log in to get that uh, it's completely free to make an account with them so if you're getting that message uh, just create an account just ask for an email create a password and you got it, it doesn't cost anything um, but uh, I, would, I would recommend that. So uh, I'm going to hit OK. So now I got my bolt here. And then now I want to put this bolt in this uh, cap screw here. So now uh, what I can do is I can select uh, this face, that face, and the bottom face of this. And then I'm going to hit joint. You see that kind of did something really weird there. It moved my whole bracket and all the way to my bolts location, and it's not really on center. It kind of wonked out on me, so I'm going to cancel that. That's not what I wanted to happen, but uh, it's actually uh, sometimes within these CAD programs, the order in which you select things matters. So since I selected this first, it's basically saying bring this to here. So since that wasn't right, I'm going to select this face first. Oops, not that, just the face. And then I'm going to hold control, select that, press joint again, and it's moving to the right place. But you see, it's still not on center. It's selecting a weird point along that edge. That's not really what I wanted either. So what I can do here is actually I can press the joint function here. And then you can see when it, I hover over this, 
it's given me some options. If I hold control while I have my mouse here, I can select the center point here. So I select the center there, and I'm going to hover over this, hold control again, and I'm going to select the center of that one, and now my uh, part is on center. Perfectly how I would like it. So I'm going to hit motion. I want this to be rigid. I just want it to be in place. I'm just going to hit OK. And now, if you wanted to get this same part here in all four of these holes, you could just copy and paste this thing four times and then do that same mate four times, um, which would kind of be a pain. Uh, but uh, a little trick that I found uh, to speed that up a little bit here is you can do pattern, uh, rectangular pattern. Uh, continue. And then... Uh, for the type here, I want to do components. I want to pattern a component. So I want to pattern this bolt here. And then I would like this to be in two directions. So I just want two in each direction. And that includes the pre-existing one there. It's not just additional, that is all of them. And then I can set my distance here, which I already know to be 1.5. And then actually, uh, the directions, you have to select the direction in which you want these to be going in. So I want this to go in this direction and in that direction. And then I had to hold control right there to select both directions. Uh, so I already know the distance from here to here is 1.5. If you're not sure, you can use this measure tool here. Uh, I can show you how that works in a sec. Um, and then this is also going to be 1.5. And then that puts my bolts right where I want them. Just load a little bit. Okay. And then it didn't mate them quite yet. I can still drag these out of there. But like I said, I can use this as built joint to speed this up a little bit. Because that's just going to create these rigid bodies here. Okay. Just okay. Simple two click. Okay. As built joint. Here and here. Okay, and there we go. I've got my four mated bolts. And that's a lot faster than copy, paste, and do that whole thing that I did for the first one. So that's just a little tip when you're doing some hardware stuff. Okay. So that is essentially our full bracket, but not quite done here. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in. I'm going to edit this, uh, this here clevis and show you how that was going to affect our top level assembly over here so I'm coming over to this uh, clevis and uh, there's actually something else I want to show you here uh, a lot of times when you have threaded parts what they do is they put a, a chamfer at the top of the thread just so you don't have any weird sharp edges um, and say you got this far and maybe you know maybe a little bit further and you got a thread on your part and you're like oh shoot I forgot to add that chamfer uh, it's gonna be hard you, you see there's not a perfectly circular edge on the top of this thread anymore for me to put a chamfer on so what I can do here is I can come down to my timeline and I can actually drag this back to before I created my thread and it's going to put my model back into the state before I had done all these features here. So now I can simply go back in here and add my chamfer. I'm just going to put this as 20 thou. Nothing crazy. And now you can see when I created that it didn't put it at the end. It put it right at the end of where I had brought my timeline back to. So that's also nice. That's going to prevent it from creating errors or when you're going like unhiding all those other features that saying, oh, you're missing an edge or something. So that's super nice. And so then we're just going to bring that back to our current time here. And now I've got my feature. I've got no errors. I've got my threads and we're all good. So the next step here, I'm just going to also just change the extrusion of this. And see when I edit a feature uh, that a pre-existing feature earlier in the timeline, it's going to revert my model back to that previous state as well. Uh, so I'm just going to put this to two inches. And then I'm going to also change the appearance of this. So I can do that by pressing A, short butt key, or I can go here into the modify and choose appearance. And uh, SolidWorks, I mean, uh, Fusion has a lot of pre-existing uh, materials for you to use. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to make it brass. And uh, I want this to be polished brass, but if you see one that you want to use here and it's got this uh, 
arrow with the line there. That just means you have to download it. It takes about two seconds, so I'll show you that right now. See, it already downloaded. Now I can use that as well. Uh, I'm just going to make this a polished brass. I'm just going to hit close. And now I'm going to hit save. And then you see I get this pop-up here of a viewer description or version description. Uh, default is user save, but uh, what's nice about this is you can add notes as to what you would change. So I'm just going to go changed appearance, uh, shaft length, and added chamfer. Oops. And I'm just going to hit OK. Now, that's just a little note to myself as to what I change, and I'd highly recommend you utilize that function, especially if you're working on a longer project or within a group. Uh, it just helps things keep very organized. And so uh, I'm going to go back to my assembly here. You can see I'm getting some warning signs in a couple different places. And uh, if I hover over this, it says update one child component to latest non-milestone version or milestone version if available. So it's just saying you've got a component out of date here and you need to update it. I can either click this option here or I can just right click here. And then I've also got the warning there. It just says get latest version. Click that and it updates right there. Perfect. And now also where that note comes in handy, uh, if I come down to this one right here, this is the one I just created. It gives you a nice little timestamp. If I click the version in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see it gives me the versions and also gives me my note right there. So you see change appearance, shaft length, and add a chamfer. I can uh, open that or edit that how I want, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then now that that's all complete, I can save the top level. And I'm just gonna go added clevis into this. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can change the appearance in here as well. And uh, something I wanna show you within this uh, little tool is uh, I like to use the paint one because they just get a nice selection of colors here. Um, so I'm just gonna make that black. And then I can change this to red. And then if you want to use, say say you edited uh, a, uh, um, a color here to make it a little bit darker, a little bit brighter, whatever you changed it, uh, instead of having to re-put it and change the edit again, you actually just click and drag that from in this design, and that's going to bring that color in there with any changes you had made to that. And uh, if you want to deep dive kind of into this workspace and the appearance, we're actually be holding a uh, rendering workshop in about two weeks. Uh, and we're going to go into appearances and the rendering workspace uh, in uh, much greater detail. So if you want to learn more about that, I recommend you show up to that workshop. Uh, so I'm just going to close here. And then I've got my full assembly here with all my different colors. You can see it's looking just like this one. And then uh, there is one other uh, thing in this uh, file I can teach you guys. Um, if you can see, I can click and drag this and it kind of weirdly goes through this right in real life that wouldn't happen you can't really make this go inside here um so there's a couple of different ways you can accomplish this is i can go into my this view here and then i can bring this as close to this as i want to get it it's pretty close and then i can hover over this triangle double click i can see it's 118 degrees so about 118 degrees and that's symmetric on both sides so i can see that's the kind of limit of degree of rotation I want to put in there. So I can come into here, I can just kind of click through these joints. It's going to highlight which joint it's selecting for me. And I just want to find the correct one here. Uh, right there. So you see now that one's highlighted after I selected that. So I can right click and you see I get this edit joint limits option right here. So I can select that. I'm just going to check uh, the minimum. That's going to automatically check minimum and maximum. So my minimum is going to be negative 118 degrees, and my maximum is going to be 118 degrees. I'm just going to hit OK, and now you see I can no longer rotate past those points. And now another cool way you can do that actually is uh, I'm just going to go back in here and delete that. Uh, going to uncheck these. Hit OK. Uh, another cool thing is actually uh, under the assemble here you get this enable all contact option and what that's going to do when I click that is now it's not going to let anything basically go through another so I can see I don't have those limits anymore but uh, it doesn't let me go past this part into there 
Now one little warning uh, with using that, if you don't have clearances on all your holes and between like, say I had made this pin right as a half inch, if I made the hole on this clevis also a half inch, it's going to see that as a contact and it's not going to let me move it. Um, so it's also a nice way kind of if you're trying to make sure all your clearances are set and you've account accommodated for all of them, that could be a way of doing that. But uh, if you're not worried about that, just start, uh, just use the limits if you're not concerned with your clearances and you just want to see it move properly. Uh, so that's just about all the information I have for you guys today. Again, we have a uh, next week's our midterm review. Uh, so make sure you show up to that. And then also we have the rendering workshop the week after that. Uh, so make sure you show up to the, both of those workshops.